Hello everyone, my name is Ruku Tokamo from Jailang Kohima. We are so grateful to the Department of School Education, Government of Nagaland for giving us a slot to introduce Jailang to you through this medium. What or who is Jailang? Jailang 1098 is a national toll-free helpline number for children in distress and in need of care and protection, which operates 24-7. It is a project under the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India. Jailine is currently operating in 570 cities all across India and presently operating in five districts in Nagaland. That is Kohima, Dimapur, Mokokshun, Peren and Kifiri. Who can call 1098? A child or any concerned adult can call 1098 anytime for children in distress and in need of care and protection. Childline do not reveal the identity of the person calling 1098. It is always kept confidential. What are the categories of cases supported by Childline? There are the missing children, the runaway children, abused children, children seeking medical assistance, child labor, street children, and all kinds of children in need of care and protection. What are some of the services extended to children by Childline? We respond to phone call 24-7, rescue of a child if need arise, nutrition and emotional support and guidance through counseling, referral services such as medical assistance, temporary shelter, education sponsorship, restoration and repatriation of a child to their families in the best interest of the child. How do we create awareness? We conduct awareness programs in college, schools, churches, colonies, outreach programs through one-to-one -one interaction, small group meetings, and distribution of our child and IEC materials. We also create awareness on the existence of Chiline and its services and the different laws of our country protecting our children. We also create awareness on the cases prevalent in our city. Chiline does not work alone or in isolation. We work along with various line government departments and agencies like the district administration, the police department, the legal department, education department, medical department, labor department, the social welfare department, state child protection society, district child protection unit, the child welfare committee, our child line partners in different parts of the country, and all the NGOs working for children. In conclusion, we want to send a message across to everyone that even as the entire world and our nation is battling against COVID-19 pandemic, Child Line is still there to reach out to any child in distress and in need of care and protection. We also take this opportunity to make an appeal to each and everyone to please call 1098 whenever you see any child in distress and in need of care and protection. Let us all join hands to make our city a safe place for our children to live in. Thank you, God bless, and stay safe. Hello everyone, welcome back to economics class. In this session, we want to discuss on chapter two. It's all about uh, choice making and therefore even the topic here is about choice economic problem now before we go into your textbook you just think okay you just think of how we are able to manage our lives you know in order to meet our biological need in order to raise our standard of living we we, we know that we need so many things in lives we want bigger whiteboard we want uh, better cameras, we want better wristwatches, we want, you know, 
better sound system, so and so forth. We have only one body. From, from this one body, you know, you want to make uh, your, your hairstyle like this and like that. You want to put on the best shirt, you know, best trousers, so and so forth. You want to have a TV, you want to have a fridge, you want to have the best cars because your friends are also all using and then, you know, uh, you happen to realize that your mobile is outdated, people are playing the latest game, so you also want to play those games or not. So our wants or our needs, it keeps increasing day by day. But when we think about the income that we have, it's always limited or not. You, we want to have everything that is available on earth, but we have a limited source. Our income is short. And therefore, we have to decide which one should we go for. First, we should decide which is the most urgent need so that we will have that and then rest of the need that we have will be fulfilled in the future. Suppose you have 10,000 with you, you want to buy mobile or you want to buy TV or you want to buy fridge, so and so forth. Which one of all these needs that I just mentioned is the most urgent one? Mobile. Say you have decided to buy mobile and therefore since you have only 10,000 you have bought mobile and therefore to buy fridge, to buy TV, you have to buy it in the future or not. So that's actually technically termed as choice problem and therefore for one mark it simply means the problem of the problem of choice making from amongst the available resources is technically called economic problem getting the point or not the problem of choice making from amongst the various alternatives that is technically called economic problem now when we look back at the examples that I have mentioned. Yes, the root cause of all this economic problem is scarcity, shortage or not. We want so many things in lives, but we have uh, 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 our resources is short, scarcity. That's the reason we are having economic problem. We are having choice problem, which one to choose first or not. So besides scarcity, you should remember that scarcity is the root cause of all economic problem. But besides that, there are also other causes, which I want us to discuss now. There are three causes clearly mentioned in your textbook. See, unlimited ones, limited resources, alternative uses of resources. These are the three important causes of economic problem. You know, our wants are unlimited, but the resources to meet these wants are very limited. Getting the point or not, our wants are unlimited. Once you meet your want, it keeps growing up. New things keep growing up. You wanted to have this stick, somehow you were able to manage this. Later on, you want to have this mic. Somehow you are able to manage this mic. Later on, you want to have this fingering. So and so forth. It keeps growing up because by nature we are selfish or not. So, you know, even though our wants is unlimited, you have to remember this, resources is limited. And therefore, there is a choice here. Our wants has different intensities. Our wants has different urgency or not. So you decide which one is the most urgent need at the hour. So that problem of choice making is technically called, you know, economic problem and it comes under unlimited ones. If we want to follow your textbook, uh, it will it will be same that already I have explained. You know, our wants are unlimited. We want this, we want that. Okay, you have one head out of this. What, what kind of a hairstyle you want to make? You want to, you want to have uh, like your teacher or you want to grow and, you know, uh, do so many hairstylings. It's up to you. But you have only one head, so you have to decide or not. So our wants are unlimited. That is one cause of economic problem. And number two, limited resources. In the production of goods and services, we need uh, required inputs called 
resources. And that is technically called factors of production. If you still remember the previous session, in the previous session, we have explained factors of production or not. So in the production of goods and services, the required resources, that is factors of production, and it comes under land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship or not. We use these four resources or inputs to produce goods and services, but we know these are limited or not. So which one should we go for? Should we use more land, more labor, more capital, more entrepreneurship? Because we know the resources are less. So the problem of choosing which one, that is also called an economic problem and it comes under limited resources. You should, you should remember, we have so many choices, we want so many things, but the resources that is required in the production is always less or limited. And then the other one is alternative uses of resources. There are some goods which can be used or which can be put to use in various ways, various alternatives. So one good example of alternative uses of resources is a plot of land. In a plot of land, we can, you know, do so many things, but we can't do all the things at a time. This plot of land, or let's say, this building can be run in order to have a online class like this. We can open a studio or not. That is one option. Another option is the same building, the same room can be used as a showroom to sell our clothes or not. Or the same building can be run as a butcher shop because uh, people in Goima wants to eat a lot of meat. It's a good business or not. Or the same building can be run as a conference room or the same building can be used or can be put to use in so many other ways but you know we have to decide which one to go for only one or if you don't want that this building can be demolished and can be used to do agricultural activity because we need all those stuff as well or not so because the resources that you have is limited and it can be put to various alternative uses is also an economic problem. Now you are confused as to which one to go for. You are undecided either to run this room as a studio or to run this as a showroom or so many things. That is also an economic problem. Understood? So besides scarcity, which is the root cause of an economic problem, these are the three important causes of economic problem. What is economic problem? It simply means the problem of choice making from amongst the available given resources. Clear or not? Okay, so next part we have the central problems of an economy. So what is central problems of an economy? The compulsion. All right, you have to refer your textbook. The compulsion of making a choice, if you want to refer your textbook, the compulsion of making choice in the use of resources. The compulsion of uh, making choices in the use of resources by all the production units or by all the economies will be known as central problems of an economy. Clear or not? I'm repeating the compulsion of making choices in the use of resources by all the economies is technically called central problems of an economy. Why it is central? Because the problem exists for all the production units, be it primary sector, be it secondary sector, be it tertiary sector, all the sectors, they face the same problem. That's why it is called central problem. What is the same problem? The same problem of making a choice in the use of the available resources. Clear or not? I'm repeating, it is called central because the same problem of making choices in the use of resources by all the economies is same and common. Got it? So under central problems of an economy, we have three different uh, factors. Number one, what to produce as a production unit, as a producer you are given a lot of options. All right, lots of options, which one to do and which one not to do. So one such option is what to produce. 
this is very interesting. You have a plan to set up an industry. You have a plan to do business. Your next question is what to produce and in what quantities or not that you have to decide before you undertake the production activities. So what to produce? Should you produce cloth or should you produce food? It's up to you. You have to decide depending on the demand in the market or the locality that you are in or not. So suppose you are located in a very remote area. If you want to start a cloth business, that might not be very meaningful or not. So depending on the situation and on the area, you decide which one to produce, either cloth or food. Or as we follow your textbook, should you produce more butter? You know what a butter is or not? Or should you produce tanks where uh, government or the security forces can always use it in the war for security reasons or not? So should you produce more tanks or should you produce more butter? It's up to you. Depending on the situation, you have to make a choice. You are compelled to make a choice or not. Likewise, should you produce consumer goods or should you produce producer goods? All right, consumer goods are those goods which is required by consumers and households like you and I. Producer goods are those goods which are required by the production units, tools, equipments, machineries, so and so forth, or not. So as a production unit, you are compelled to make a choice either to, to, to produce consumer goods or producer goods. Further, if we are to follow your textbook, you are undecided, we are confused, you are compelled to make a choice. Which one should you produce? Necessity good. Those goods which are required urgently. Without clothes, we cannot go out and therefore clothes are also a necessity. Without food, we are always hungry. So food is also a necessity. Without shelter, we are always in the rain and we'll get cold or sick. So then you have to decide. Those are necessity good. Luxury, luxurious goods, car, TV, fridge, uh, furniture, so and so forth. So now you are undecided which one should you go for, either luxury goods or necessity goods. You have been thrown open to all these options at a time and therefore you have to make a choice. That is, that will come under central problems of an economy. Not only you, all the production units who are engaged in the, uh, in the business, in the investment, will face the same problem. All right, I'll not decide, it's you who decide as to what to produce first and after deciding how much to produce. All right, you know the number of consumers in your community is very less, maybe 100 or so. So in those situations, you have to decide how much quantities to produce. If you produce too much, demand will be less and your, your business is affected. So how much to produce, how, mu how much quantities to produce, it's also always an economic problem. Then we have how to produce. This is very interesting. Suppose you have decided to produce one of these goods and now you have to decide what kind of uh, a technique you want to apply. You know, in order to produce goods and services, you require uh, the factors of production, no doubt. But in the end, you also have to decide which technique you want to apply. To go for large-scale production, technically called capital intensive technique, or to go for small-scale production, that is technically called labor intensive technique. Which technique are you willing to apply? Labor intensive technique is a technique of production which requires large number of labors, but small amount of, uh, small amount of machines. Are you getting the point or not? So should you apply for this? If you employ large number of labor, the quality of good that you produce will also be of less, quant less quality or not, because you are employing less machine and most of the works are done by human hands. That's one option. Another option is you, you, have, you can also go for capital intensive technique where you will require less labor, but you know you will require large amount of capital. The best example is this recording studio. We have just one or two uh, friends over here, but they are able to operate this much amount of capital here. And when you watch it on Facebook or YouTube, the kind of quality that they produce is always large 
or not. So you have to decide whether to go for large scale production or small scale production. But you have to remember if you only go for capital intensive technique, you are not generating employment opportunities for the people. That's number one. So you have to think about that as well. When you go for small scale or labor intensive technique, no doubt you are creating employment opportunities. But on the other hand, your quality is less. And therefore, in the international market, we are being hit very badly. Example, India or not. So this is also one decision which needs to be taken by the production units and economic problem. And lastly, we have for whom to produce. This is the most interesting part of all these uh, central problems of an economy, for whom to produce. All right, in your textbook, the last line says, who is paid how much is also an economic problem, is also a choice problem. Now, in the production activities, in the production of goods and services, what you do is you, uh, you assemble or you manage or organize the factors of production. Let me use the board once. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, or not. So as an entrepreneur, as a manager, you organize all this land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, and then you have, you have uh, all of these factors have contributed in the production of goods and services. How do you repay them back? Obviously, you have to, since you have hired them, you have to pay them in the form of money or not. So for the use of land, you will get a rent. For the use of labor, you will get a wage. For the use of capital, you will get interest rate. And for the use of managerial skill or entrepreneurship, you will get profit or not. That's very easy. So for whom to produce? Actually, it says for whom to produce, what kind of a good to be produced. It says about that, but in the end, it's only about who is paid how much. Because in the production of all these goods and services, not all the factors contributes the same amount. Not all the factors contributes the same idea or not. So who is paid how much is always a problem. How much do we pay for the rent? How much... Uh, do we pay for the wage? How much do we pay for the interest rate? How much should we pay for the profit? It's always a problem or not. You have used somebody's uh, managerial or entrepreneurial skill. How much do you pay? You have used somebody's capital or maybe money. So in the end, how much interest you pay? You have used somebody's labor. How much wage do you pay? You have used somebody's land. You have taken this room on rent. How much do you pay? So who is paid how much amount of money is always an economic problem. Getting the point or not? So in, I'm repeating central problems of an economy, all the production units will face the same problem. That's why it is called central. What to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. Getting the point or not? So uh, with this, uh, I conclude the session. In the next class, in the next session, we will do chapter four that will be on demand. So if you have time, you kindly try to go through uh, chapter four. It's very interesting. We will talk about demand in the next session. Okay, thank you.